Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Hot off the heels of my wing figure review, I am bringing you a tutorial and review for the fossilizer combiner made of the Predacons, Paleotrex, and Ractonite, along with Wingfinger, the most recent fossilizer. It's a bit of an odd combiner because it's cross-factional, Wingfinger, you know, being a maximal. But visually, they're the fossilizers that work best. Now you can swap any of these guys out for one of their mold mates. Sadly, Wingfinger does not yet have a mold mate, but he, uh, she has two, he has one there. So you have some options, but today we're gonna look at, you know, your base three. So the first thing you wanna do to start building this thing is go ahead and take all these apart. So we're gonna go ahead and do that at the snap of a finger, like so. Et voila, the magic of video editing. So now we have all three of our fossilizers down in piles. So we're gonna do this pretty much like we're playing with Legos, for anyone that's done that before. And we're just gonna go ahead and walk through this step by step. So the first thing you want to do is get the robot legs from Ractonite here and here, like so. Gonna stand them up. Then you are going to take the rib cage areas, or like you know, thigh and shoulder areas from both your Paleotrex and wing finger here, and you want to configure them to where they look like this. So if you need to pause this and just kind of get a look at how I have these, how they're, you know, set up, these are going to form the upper legs now. So I'm going to plug them in to Ractonite's legs. This joint's going to form the knee there, which is pretty cool. Kind of a nice midway point on the leg there. Do it over here. Balance it out, do what you got to do. There we go. Then you are going to take the T-Rex head from Paleotrex, make sure it's folded down as if you're putting it in robot mode. And you're going to connect each leg to use ports here on either side. And you want the dino head facing forward for this configuration. So you get all this, get set up, and again, balance. All right, so we get the legs. Big, long chicken legs. The next thing you wanna do is take those little feet, the robot feet, specifically from Paleotrex, like so, and you're gonna position them in a way to where you face like this and this. You're attaching them to the posts here above the knees on the legs. And we'll just kind of point in there same thing over here. Oh, I got it backwards. Just kidding, guys. <laughs> you want the um, little 5 mil port sticking out, not in. So get it in there like so. And then over here. All right. So now we have this, more fleshed out legs. Next, we're gonna give this thing a tail. The way you do that is you're going to take the pterodactyl head, the wing finger, you're going to remove the crest, set that aside, fold the little peg down here, and then attach it, just like this, and position as needed. The instructions that I saw have you do it like this, so it's actually kind of wagging like a tail. So you get that, make sure wing finger's face is staying hidden, nobody wants a face on the back of their leg, that's weird. All right, so it's all starting to come together here. Now we'll start building the upper body. So you are gonna take this piece, forms part of the dino tail or the left shoulder for Paleotrex, and you're gonna take the hip joints from wing finger, like this, and you're going to attach them. And the way you wanna do it, you're gonna bend these joints all the way down. Same thing here, like that. You're gonna plug them on to this area right here on either side of the tail, like so. So you get this little T-shaped thing. And then you take Ractonite's chest and you're going to plug these inner holes 
onto these pegs for actinite. And you will need to kind of pivot this little tail away to give yourself some clearance, but we'll go on there. Just like this, oops. All right, so you got this kind of hanging out off the back like so. And then lastly, you are going to take Ractonite's arms here and here, flip the pegs out like this, and you are going to attach them to these. So you're going to swing them in there, I'm going to bend these in like so, do the same thing here. That's the start of our upper body. You can see all that. So we're getting there. The next piece we're gonna take, this one right here, it's a nice bladed piece. You're gonna spin this around 180, like so. Straighten that out. And then you are going to attach this like so. One right in these ports right here on the front. So you form this like bladed chest plate thing. And these pieces are just going to kind of hold it in place like that. Looking very cool. You're going to flip all this upside down. You want this thing face behind you here. Get all straightened out. And you'll notice you got these ports here on Ractonite's little hands. And you are going to take the arms from Wing Finger and you're just going to slap them on there. And the way you want to do it is you want this arm going like this, where you know the natural bend of the arm kind of bends away. You also want to rotate it to where the claws are facing up. And you just put it on there like so. Same thing here. Rotate. Put it on there. Alright, so you get this. Then you're going to flip everything back the way you had it. You're going to take the feet of Wing Finger. And you are going to plug these in to the hand ports right here. This part might be a little tricky, so you want to kind of hold everything steady as you plug it in there. It's just going to, I guess, it'll rotate on the hand like so. So, same thing here. Plug it in, and you can rotate it. So now we're starting to form the arms, as you can see. Pretty neat so far. Next thing we're gonna do is take Paleotrex's hands and attach them oops, here. They'll go in, kind of tight, but there we go. So we're starting to get there now, right? It's all coming together. So, same thing on this side. It's very floppy, I gotta warn you, this isn't like the most solid combiner out there. But he is cool looking. All right. Yeah, we got like a bone lord going on here. Really neat. So that's most of the upper body right there. Now to finish this guy off, you wanna take the dinosaur head from Ractonite, open the mouth all the way, like so. You're gonna take this skull crest from Wingfinger Put this peg back, plug it in to Ractonite's mouth, and then flip the mask down. And there you go. There's that combiner head, and that's what this crest was used for. Got a little sneak peek of that in the last video. And then lastly, we're just going to plug it in. Now this part can be kind of a pain because of clearance. Alright, so you got to make sure you angle this just the right way. This is indeed going in this hole. And it's a tight fit, which is what made me think it wasn't going in, but it is. And you just have to kind of slide it down diagonally. So it plugs all the way in. Make sure it's uh, nice and straight here. Make sure everything stays where it's supposed to. And you get this. Now, unfortunately, the head really doesn't get any sort of clearance to articulate, so it's always looking forward and down a little bit. But it's still very cool looking. Then, lastly here, we're going to... Flip this peg on Ractonite's head down, and we are going to plug the upper body onto the lower. This 
also a pretty tight fit, so you may have to fight with it to either go where you want it to. Doesn't want to plug in there, but it will. There we go. It's annoying when you're like forcing a peg in a hole that's on a ball joint. So it just wants to move around constantly. All right, here it is. Let's get them all set up, all straightened out. Now behold, the finished product. I would be lying if I said that this guy was stable in any capacity. Really, really not stable at all. Um, it's very cool looking. It's a really neat novelty, and it's something that you can tell was engineered into these toys as they were being made. Obviously, you know, we see the dedicated combiner head that fits perfectly in a Raconite's mouth. You also notice that these, like, thigh pieces, even though they come from two completely different characters, are pretty much symmetrical to each other. So, there was definitely some, some forethought that went into this. He is, again, quite unstable. I am pretty perfectly balanced right now. And, you know, given the multi-jointed nature of his legs, you know, his legs kind of want to bend and twist. His arms aren't very strong, and the lower arms have a tendency to pop out. And the head can't, you know, really articulate in any way. So, this guy really only works as like a solid display piece and nothing else. So, it's very cool you can build this. It's cool that it's official. I wish they would have done more than just show us you know, one of them in hand on a video one time and never actually give us proper instructions for this, leaving the fans to figure it out for themselves. But it is better than them never revealing this. And in truth, there probably were plans to, you know, reveal instructions at some point and then they just got lost in the ether as, you know, things got busy, I'd imagine. So the lack of official instructions and, you know, an actual name for this guy are a bit disappointing, but the finished product is really impressive looking. You know, personally, I will not be displaying this guy on my shelf like this just because, you know, a light breeze or somebody stepping in the room too hard is probably going to make him fall over. But it is nice to know that I can have this thing configured like this if I want to. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think this thing is really cool? Do you think it's worth buying all three fossilizers to put together? Even if it's not necessarily the most playable toy out there? Or do you think this thing's just a big waste of time and money? Because you are going to pay about $60 to put him together, and he's admittedly one of the worst combiners ever made functionally. I mean, the guy doesn't hold together very well and really is just begging to fall over. So more than anything, you're paying 60 bucks just for the novelty of putting this together and looking at it. And I can understand how that would definitely turn some people off to this. Either way, I'd love to hear you guys' feedback in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me today as I took you through a tutorial and brief review of the new Fossilizer Combiner. And with all that said, I will see you next time.